Today on the 700 Club Canada. It was there that I saw a bunch of police tape and a bunch of sirens. There was my son's car smashed up, uh, you know, against a tree. And he said, honey, I see his car. You know, there's an ambulance pulling away. And I remember us saying, no matter what happens, we will worship. We will worship. Just giving it to God. Welcome to the 700 Club Canada. I'm Brian Warren. And I'm Laurel and Tyler Thompson. It's great to be with you today. We're looking forward to today's show, which includes our In Focus segment. We'll discuss the ongoing issue of freedom of conscience and religion in Canada in the wake of some recent events that appear to discriminate against those with pro-life views. Joining us is activist Fatin Grzeski, and she'll share her views on how Canada may have now shifted into a reverse discrimination culture in the name of tolerance. Mm. But coming up first, parents discover a blog their son had written about heaven 45 days before mm. his death, and that's when healing for them began. It's truly amazing. Watch. He texted and said, we're done with dinner. I'll be home soon. Come 11 o'clock, he wasn't home. I texted his friend and said, do you know where he is? His friend said, no, he left at, you know, 10.35. I knew that I needed to go looking for him. I saw a bunch of police tape and a bunch of sirens. There was my son's car smashed up against a tree. Some of his older friends, they were graduating, and he really wanted to attend that. And so we had spent the day together. I had been bribing him with Starbucks to like hang out with me throughout the day. And we just had a great day. And so we came home just in time for him to get ready to run out. And he comes running down and he's like, bye mom, I'll see you later. And he was out the door. And he was gonna go out to dinner with a friend and then to come home. And uh, we were waiting for him to come home my wife, Lee Ellen, was texting with him, and, you know, all signs are pointing to him coming home. So I expected him home at 11. And around 11.15, I tried calling him. I couldn't reach him. And I was getting worried, because I knew he wouldn't push it. And she begins to worry more and more, and then I begin to worry. By 11.45, I was complete panic. And so I got in the car and started trying to retrace the path that he would be coming home. And Carlos and I are on the phone and we're, you know, calling each other back and forth. And, you know, my heart's racing and I'm just, you know, you feel the adrenaline, just the shaking. I almost got to the end of the route in terms of the friend's house he had left from. It was there that I saw a bunch of police tape and a bunch of sirens. There was my son's car smashed up, uh, you know, against a tree. And he said, honey, I see his car. You know, there's an ambulance pulling away. And I remember us saying, no matter what happens, we will worship. We will worship. Just giving it to God right then. The police kind of descended upon me, and I told them that that's my son's car. Uh, I say, look, just tell me the hospital where he is, and I, I need to go see him. And he said, your son is deceased. And that's when the world stopped. And what we discovered happened was my son had been shot while he was driving. It wasn't a car accident. It felt like an electromagnetic pulse just taking all the life out of you. I cannot believe a person can withstand that physical pain. It is physical, even though you know it's emotional. You would think that would have killed me. I, I wish it had killed. That would have been easier, <laughs> you know, just do me in. It wasn't even anger at God, maybe. It was just a sort of profound sadness that created a barrier between, you know, him and me, and we just had to work through that. I did say to him, respectfully, <laughs> you're sovereign and you've hurt my feelings. You have hurt me. Because I recognize, like, God's in charge of this. He could have stopped this. And isn't there some other way you could have done what you needed to do without taking Mark? You know, God just kind of bringing me back to, I have a plan. You don't have to understand it, but if you can try to submit to it, I'm gonna show up for you. And I'm a very demanding child. I just come to God and I say, 
You said you'd be here. I'm counting on it. You know, I need you. If you're going to put me through this, I need you to be there with me. My friend came over and she said, have you seen Mark's Heaven blog? I'm like, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. Mark had a photography website. He was a blogger. He was a writer. He was a lot of things. But uh, we went on to Mark's website, and there was a post on Heaven. It was about 45 days before Mark died. I love the image of Heaven because it's perfect, perfect peace. What a beautiful thought that one day I will be completely in the presence of God will actually be able to feel the magnitude of all his love and peace with no earthly fears or worries to distract me. And the fact that we'll all be worshiping God together in one place forever, that amazes me. I'm sure it'll be far more incredible than I can comprehend now, and I love that. God is super good. I can't wait to be with him forever. And so Carlos and I, I mean, we were kind of like crazy people. We ran into his room and we're tearing it up, looking for every journal we can find. We've lost him, but maybe we can find parts of him in his journals. We realized, oh my gosh, here is a window into Mark's soul. Mark was not special as much as he was surrendered. It was his wholehearted embracing of God's plan of who God is that transformed his life. So we sat in his room just weeping with his piles of journals and just read and read and read. All of a sudden, uh, things started to come into focus in terms of moving from why did this happen to the plan unfolding. What he left behind was just such an intimate documentation, history of his relationship with God. That's where the idea of a blog started for us, where we wanted to post encouragement that, you know, Mark is still encouraging us from heaven through his journals. I wear a bracelet. It has scripture on it from Psalm 18, 28, and it says, You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. We visited the accident site shortly after the accident, and of course that was painful. You know, there's glass everywhere, and a stump, a tree stump, had been knocked over by Mark's car, and there was a makeshift memorial. And of course, you know, we're weeping. Like this is, this is a place where we've lost our son. And I feel him whispering to me through that Psalm, I will turn your darkness into light. And so I got this crazy idea that I wanted that stump of that tree because that stump heard my son's last breath. So Carlos went and he got me that stump. And then I took plants and I put life on that stump and planted it all. It's now a beautiful place. And it's no longer the stump that heard Mark's last breath. It's the stump that witnessed heaven's door opening up. It's the stump that witnessed Mark stepping into the presence of God. I think the moment that happened, Mark's death, God unleashed a wave of love upon all of us and just a determination that we will not let Satan have that night. We will not give in. And thankfully, through Mark's writings, he's shown us how, you know, that we will choose love, that love and joy will be our weapons. We will put our energy towards that. And that certainly is gonna be a lifelong battle. You know, we're, we're one year out, I pray we can be faithful five years out, 10 years out. It's gonna be a long road for that. We speak about Mark very openly and honestly and you know, sometimes we just say to each other, I miss Mark. A lot of stories, funny stories. And he wasn't perfect, so we, we do rag on him a little bit, you know. And just sharing memories, talking about him. We want him to be a part of our lives forever. God allows things he doesn't love to accomplish things that he does love. The ultimate example of that is the cross. It only comes down to one question. It's God saying, do you trust me? And by God's grace, the answer is yes. Please help me, but I, I trust you. I believe that good can come out of this and will come out of it and is coming out of it. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be confused. It's okay to say why. We see the Psalmist David doing that. Where are you, God? Why have you forsaken me? I think if we come to God respectfully with the intention of let's work this out, I think he wants us to do that. And so what I've encouraged my kids to do is please don't break off communication with God. Go broken. Go to him broken and trust that 
He's going to slowly heal you back up. You know, when you look at um, losing a child, it's never easy. Yeah. But when you do have something that is a point of contact, Right. It does help you. Gives you that hope. It does give you hope. Yes. Yeah. I love that stump that Leanne was talking about. She said, I want that stump mm. that saw his last moment, but mm. uh, also saw heaven's gates open up. Right. It reminded me of, of Job. It mm. says in chapter 14, uh, there's hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it shall bud again. At mm. the scent of water, it shall bud again. Right. And uh, that's how our lives are when we have trauma that takes place. Yeah. We can live in God's newness. Mm. There is a there's a new normal that will come. Not right. the old normal, but there is a newness that God can bring out of that. Mm. You know, and it's it's such a real thing. Uh, this life does bring loss mm -hmm. and in many different ways. But yes. I love the word where it says that he is near to the brokenhearted. Yes. And if you're going through some kind of pain today, a loss you've experienced, mm -hmm. maybe a family member, even relationships. You know, when a relationship ends, sometimes sure. it's heartbreaking. Yeah. There's no worse pain than that. You know, and the word promises that God sees your tears mm -hmm. and he is close to the brokenhearted. I love the bracelet that uh, Leanne put um, on as well, that, that 128th Psalm as mm. well. You know, mm. you know, just just talking about the intimacy of God. Right. Because I was remembering uh, mm. losing people in my own life and yes. I was thinking about through some sudden and others through a process, mm. uh, but God, that's what, you have to right. hold on to that. But God. But God. Yeah, but for the grace of God. Mm -hmm. I wonder if this is touching your heart and that testimony because mm -hmm. that blog, he loved Jesus and he knew he would spend his time uh, living through your grief. Mm -hmm. It cost you absolutely nothing, but we want to get it into your hands because we believe that God mm -hmm. will touch not only your broken heart, but he will give you the grace to go on. That's right. Coming up after the break, it's In Focus with Fatin Grzeski. Stay with us. Welcome to our In Focus segment. The CBC reported recently that Liberal MPs walked out on a Status of Women committee meeting last September to oppose the Conservative pick for chair, Rachel Harder, a parliamentarian who has previously said she is anti-abortion. And so, Fatine, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Um, you know, can you help us to understand what is in play here? Um, on the surface, it looks a lot like the Liberal Party is saying that you can't can't be a democratically elected representative of the Canadian people unless you hold beliefs and views that are approved by the Liberal gov government or which tie into the NDB stand as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they just walked out and shut down the process. Yeah. Well, what's at play here? Again, and I think this is such a perfect example of where the issue isn't the issue. Right. Right? Like, you might be tempted to make this all about abortion and say, right. okay, well, you know, that whole abortion topic again, but it's really not about abortion. It's about freedom of conscience, uh, which is often informed by religion. So you might want to say freedom of religion right in there as well. And that is actually a protected, chartered uh, right. It's one of the fundamental Canadian rights that's outlined in the, in the charter. And so basically what this whole scenario communicated mm -hmm. is not so much that you can't be a member of parliament and have certain conscience beliefs, but that you can't be a member of parliament with certain roles mm -hmm. because this was a leadership role. And I want to say this, you know, just uh, on leadership merit, mm -hmm. Rachel Harder is a sharp pencil. Like I have seen that girl in action and mm -hmm. she, honestly, she would have been a fantastic chair. Mm -hmm. I believe she would have been a fair chair. And, you know, she hasn't actually come out blazing really hardcore on a pro-life viewpoint. She just has a pro-life voting record, right. which a lot of members of parliament do. And breaking news, 
a lot of Canadians actually believe that way. So right. members of parliament that uh, have a pro-life voting record aren't necessarily pushing their own personal agenda. Mm. A lot of them are just representing their constituents, which right. is what democracy is all about, right? right? That's and how so, they got voted in. So what's disturbing about this is that it basically it's saying, like, listen, um, you cannot have influence mm. in this committee if you have a pro-life, personal pro-life perspective, or even if you're representing your constituents, mm -hmm. because I would guess, I haven't done a personal survey of Rachel Harder's writing, but I would guess she's from Lethbridge, Alberta. It's probably pretty pro-life, okay? And there's also, anyway, I could go on and on and on. Right. We've really got a short amount of time today. But just to bottom line this, the issue really isn't the mm. issue. It's, this is not so much about abortion. It's about the right for Canadians mm -hmm. to actually access our chartered rights and freedoms mm. of conscience and you know, religion. What I feel is concerning to me in a lot of different issues that are coming to light across Canada is the freedom of religion, uh, religion and freedom of conscience is really under attack in our nation. Mm -hmm. We are finding it harder and harder, and it's not just um, uh, there's no democratic process to actually ensure that it's followed. So when someone doesn't agree with you, they just they walk out, or there's um, a name calling, or a lot of things that are going on that. Um, you know, that put this in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Well, and there is a way to hold uh, people who breach freedom of conscience and religion to the fire, but it's very costly and time consuming. You right. know, like this potentially could be a charter, you know, um, a, ch a charter case that could go right to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. of Canada if somebody wanted to push it there. Mm -hmm. But y you're absolutely right. And some people might feel like, oh, this is just alarmist mm -hmm. talk. You know, these are just these like white little Canadian girls, you know, uh, talking about and, and being alarmist. But we're, we're, it's really not. Right. Uh, there are so many examples examples that have manifested uh, over the last several years well, that show freedom of conscience is under fire in Canada. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially I was interested you were you were talking earlier uh, to me about doctors. Right. Yeah. Recently, again, last fall, um, uh, of course, everybody knows that physician-assisted suicide was legalized mm -hmm. recently, and uh, a few thousand Canadians have already uh, accessed physician-assisted suicide. And, and uh, there was a survey that came out while that legislation was being debated that said, I think it was, I'm doing this from memory right now, but I think it was that 74% of doctors and medical professionals said that mm -hmm. if assisted suicide was legalized in Canada, that they really didn't want to participate in it. Okay, right. so 74%. That's a that's a big number, and that's a really fair thing for yeah, a lot of people. For sure, you know that's just Legit. how your heart feels. You yeah, just don't sure. want to be um, engaging in that process to yeah. help someone end their life. It's just not, not according to your conscience something you want to do, and not why a lot of them got involved in the medical profession and took the Hippocratic oath and right. blah blah blah. Right. So, so basically, this whole question about freedom of conscience for physicians has been going on, and um, the Ontario government um, there was actually a bill that was brought forward uh, to protect physician conscience rights in Ontario, and uh, it was shot down. It, it did not pass. Uh, there have been other uh, initiatives that have uh, gone forward at the federal level. Level that have not passed and from what I understand um, every single global jurisdiction that has legalized physician assisted suicide has also brought in legislation to protect conscience, conscience rights right so it's a little bit mm. crazy I right. think a little bit alarming that this isn't happening in Canada and we need to talk about it so thank you well it it is real really alarming and I think that our viewers out there can say that they're beginning to see you know in the news that there is a, an a, attack and an assault on freedom of religion and freedom of conscience in this country and I thank you for that I hope that the next time you come we can talk a little bit about yeah. what so are some things yeah so much to talk about but what are the things that we can do and for sure be a voice right absolutely be a voice don't be silent it's very important thanks for joining us we'll be right back hey Cindy how can I prepare for retirement ask anything retirement what should I be doing ask anything is it wrong to play the lottery Ask anything. Is it a sin to be cremated? Ask anything. Ask anything. I am asking you! Oh, jeez. No, ask anything by Pat Robertson. Oh! Ask anything. Available now. In her early 30s, Anne Renee Joseph thought she was happily married until her husband abruptly filed for divorce. 
Anne Renee became a single mother with a six-year-old son to raise. I didn't have anything. I went from having everything to having nothing. We sold our home and closed down our business. Of course, there's, you go through that grieving process. Anne Renee struggled as she faced the future alone. She had a master's degree and was trained as a teacher, but her experience in the workforce was limited. But she remembered four principles of success she learned from her parents. Which were love God, do what he says, tithe your money, and stay out of debt. Anne Renee realized that she let her tithing lapse through the years. She determined to resume tithing on whatever income she made. I had to just surrender everything to Jesus, and I needed everything. I needed a job, I needed a house, I needed a car. Just six months after Anne Renee began tithing, every need was met. The Lord sent me four jobs, so I had an opportunity to pick. A new apartment and a car soon followed. Along the way, Anne Renee began to watch the 700 Club. Soon, she became a CBN partner. I loved the stories that they told, providing wells and helping the orphans. As Anne Renee faithfully tithed and partnered with CBN, she received a promotion from teacher to principal. Several years later, she became a district superintendent. Her next promotion took her straight to the top as superintendent of the arts for the 295 school districts in the state of Washington. Whatever amount I made, I tithed, and then I gave more as opportunity became available to me. Anne Renee retired in 2013 and opened a new consulting business. Today, she's happily married with three grown children and seven grandchildren. He gave me back everything. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's like out there for everybody. Plant the money where you know it will produce a harvest and where it's gonna make a difference. And then watch and see what God will do. I love that testimony because, you know, I've seen that in my own life that when I was uh, faithful to understand the, the, the rules of the kingdom of God. So many people, they struggle with coming into God's purpose and plan for their lives because they don't understand the principles of the kingdom of God. You know, God used two terminologies. He said, the kingdom of God has come and the kingdom of heaven. He spoke about those two terms. Heaven is a place, but the kingdom of God is a system Salvation gets you into the system, but then by faith you begin to walk through the system by doing the things that God says. And tithing is a part of that. Anne Rand found that when she began to tithe, she, she recognized in the world, the system is how much we can receive and, and how much we can get, but in the kingdom it's how much you give. When you begin to understand that law, you'll realize it's as strong as the law of gravity. It's the law of faith. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. To help you, maybe you're struggling in an area and you feel like as you're moving into this new year that you haven't broken through, I want to get this into your hands. Faith. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything. 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. But as I pray with you, faith, the Bible said, comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. In other words, that's how it is activated, and then you must act on what has been activated. So that word that I just gave to you, and I want you to write this down, Romans 12, 3, to everyone has been given a measure of faith. Now that's incorruptible seed that God put inside of your heart, but as I speak this over your life, if you're struggling in those areas, just like Anran, call the number on the screen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would break the spirit of doubt and unbelief and faith would be loosed and rise up in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you, 1-855-759-0700. Prayer partners are standing by. And right after the break, it's our, it's one of my favorite segments. It is the time when we pray for you. Don't go away. Daddy. Yeah, buddy. How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way.
Welcome back. If you've got questions and don't know where or how to find the answers, get Ask Anything. It's our gift to you when you become a 700 Club Canada monthly partner. Now, Ask Anything tackles hard questions and topics like depression, suicide, addiction, and it offers biblical insight on marriage and relationships, mm -hmm. when to end them, and when to keep trying. All it takes is a phone call. Call us today at 1-855-759-0700. It would mean so much to us. We'll get this gift to you right away. Mm -hmm. And thank you again for all of your two-way communication mm -hmm. with social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, Facebook and Spine. all of those, those platforms. We thank really you. appreciate that. And we also enjoy praying with you and for you. Mm -hmm. Would you put Connie from New Westminster on your prayer list and she's praying for health and hope in troubles. And Julia from Ottawa, restoration for family relationships. Father, we just thank you, Lord. I pray, oh God, for Julia and mm. her request regarding her family. I pray, Father, whatever has been broken, that you would mend it. Whatever, Lord, there is a, a dis dissension between them, O oh God, I pray, Father, you would come in and you would be the healing salve, that you would bring wholeness to this family and you would restore everything that the yes. enemy has stolen, for that is who you are, God. You, you are the restorer. And Father, I thank you for Connie and also for those that have been grieving and those that have been going through those, those troubles. Lord, you gave that scripture verse earlier today, and it just keeps echoing in my spirit. Lord, uh, Job 14 and 7, there is hope for a tree. Yeah. If it is cut down, it shall bud again at the scent of water. I declare even now the power of the Holy Spirit, the, the scent of heaven on their lives. And I mm. pray that that would not only bring hope, but also healing yes, and deliverance in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Here's a power verse to leave you with. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for. And assurance about what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. Mm, one of Until my favorite time. verses. Yep. Mm -hmm. God bless. To contact us, phone 1-855-759-0700. You can email us at cba at 700club.ca or write to us at Christian Broadcasting Associates, Incorporated. The 700 Club Canada, P.O. Box 700, Scarborough, Ontario, M1S 4T4. You can now like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter or Instagram. On the next 700 Club Canada. I had a assault with a deadly weapon charge, and it wasn't because I grabbed a gun or something. That was a fit of rage. Kid, poor kid did nothing to me. Juan Mancias was 15 when he nearly killed another teenager with his bare hands. His anger began when he was a young boy, and in the most unlikely place, the church.